Hey guys, it's Chris and welcome to Cross Chop. Today we're doing my first ever Q&A video and I'm pretty excited because there's 27 questions Ooh. that I received on my recent giveaway video and I'm just gonna be going through here answering them one by one in alphabetical order. I figured that was the fairest way to do it really. So question number one comes from Bill Benton and he says, congratulations, this is one of my go-to channels. Thanks Bill, you're one of my go-to channels too. What franchise that hasn't had a new game release in 10 years deserves the AAA treatment? For this, I'm gonna stretch it just a little bit and I'm gonna go with Metroid. Now, I know that there have been 3D, fully realized environmental world Metroid games in the Prime series, but I'm gonna go with the 2D Metroid games. The last classic side-scrolling 2D Metroid game we had was Metroid Zero Mission, which came out in 2004. So it's been 12 years since we've had a game in that franchise that harkens back to the glory days of Super Metroid. And of course, Nintendo's only giving us Federation Force this year. Bloodbath2080 asks, what is your favorite slash least favorite gaming console? For this, I'm gonna go with simply consoles that I actually have. So my favorite is gonna be the Super Nintendo. As far as my least favorite console that I own goes, I'm probably gonna go with the Sega Master System. And that's honestly only because I have the least experience with it. I need more games for it and it's one that I don't regularly have hooked up. So it's kind of unfair to call it out that way, but I had to pick one. Pam over at Cannot Be Tamed asks, what is your favorite recent game, say from the last two years? This is actually a tough one. In looking through lists of the top games from 2014 and 2015, I admittedly haven't played a lot of the, what you'd consider marquee titles. So I think I'm actually gonna kind of take a weird route here and pick two. One being a favorite retro game that I played for the first time in the last two years and another one being one of the ones that was released within that time frame. So as far as my favorite retro game I've played in the last two years, it's gonna be Super Metroid. And my favorite modern game that's been released in the last two years, I think has been Until Dawn. I totally get the arguments about it being cheesy, and it's definitely got those nods to silly horror films, from, especially from the 80s. But I was really impressed by the design of the game, the sound editing was great. It really felt to me like one of the best versions of an interactive movie that I've played to date. Chris Miller asks, congrats on two years on the tubes. In your opinion, what are some of the worst video game power-ups? In no particular order, the crocodile hat dragon thing in Wario Land or Super Mario Land 3. Sure, it can breathe fire, but it also prevents you from body slamming bricks and enemies. It affords you no additional jumping advantages. You can't glide or anything. And you're also still just as susceptible on your head as you were before. Number two, the giant's knife in Ocarina of Time. This thing gets you all hyped up thinking, oh man, I've got this awesome big ass sword now. And then it breaks. And third, I'm gonna go with Goldeen in Super Smash Brothers. You grab a Pokeball, you throw it down, hoping for something awesome like a Lugia or a Zapdos, and you get a Goldeen using Splash. Goldeen even has a horn. <laughs> Clinster asks, what are your game collecting pet peeves? A few of the ones that come to mind off the top of my head are gonna be stickers, incomplete disc-based games, scratched discs, outrageous prices on games that really aren't even that good, outrageous prices on games that are good and there's an abundance of them. And I think lastly, just kind of the mentality of having a large collection as like a status symbol. I think it's awesome when people have big collections and it's really impressive. And it really comes down to kind of how they present their collection and kind of the attitude that they express. There's a big difference between presenting your collection and saying, hey, look what I've collected over a period of time typically years, versus an attitude of saying, I've got this, you ain't gonna, so get out. Basically, I think there's some really unwarranted negativity and braggadocio that goes on in the gaming community, but honestly, that's gonna be just about anywhere and in just about any hobby, so I try to really just let it roll off my shoulders and just kind of do my own thing, girl. This question comes from Corpse Flood Gaming, the recent winner of my giveaway contest. And he asks, what's your favorite game genre and what are your top five games in that genre? I may do a dedicated video to this somewhere down the road, but off the top of my head, I would say probably action adventure. Historically, those are kind of the games that I gravitate to. And I would say some key examples of that are gonna be the Uncharted series, Metal Gear Solid. I'm even gonna throw the Legend of Zelda series in there. The next franchise I'm gonna mention obviously has many more RPG and cinematic elements, but I'll probably throw in Mass Effect, and I think I'll throw Metroid in there too. This next one comes from Daniel Nidziela. I hope I pronounced that right. He says, awesome collection. 
How did you get those stickers for the top of your N64 games? I was alerted to them on CJR's channel. He did a video kind of describing these in labels that he had found, and he got them through Etsy. I believe the seller's name is Zabo's Arcades. I think he's, his name is Joe Zabo or Sabo. And I'll post a link to his Etsy shop in the description if you'd like to check those out as well. They are awesome. 84 Retro F. 84 Retro asks, what is your all time favorite NES game? and also the worst stinker for the NES for you. Admittedly, I'm not the best person to ask this because I'm not the biggest fan of the NES. I've definitely played it as a kid, but my sweet spot, as I kind of mentioned in that other question, was with the Super Nintendo. So my favorite is still Super Mario Brothers 3. As far as the worst NES game I've played, I'm gonna go with Ikari Warriors 2. That game is rough. My buddy over at Cricket asks, are you going for a full Wii library? No, I'm not. A few people have noticed that I've shown off some really crappy shovelware on the Wii in some of my recent pickups videos, and I'm only doing that because I'm honestly showing you stuff that I have picked up in recent days or weeks. It doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to keep it. I'm not going for a full Wii library, so I won't be keeping games like Barbie Horse Adventures and Sega Bass Fishing, so those games will be getting traded off or turned in for trade at a store. Something like that. The Mighty Loxness Monster asks, what made you want to start your own channel? Thinking back to more than two years ago, I remember kind of getting more into YouTube than I'd ever been before, largely because I had recently purchased an N64 off of Craigslist and was pretty excited about the price that I paid and felt energized about recollecting some of my lost games from the late 90s and early 2000s. So in tracking some of those games down, I was naturally drawn to old videos about them. So I'd come across channels like, of course, Metal Jesus Rocks and the AVGN. I found Nintendo Collecting, a really awesome collector up in Canada, CJR, of course, and some of the other bigger collectors and bigger name YouTubers out there. And after watching some of their videos, I knew that I didn't nearly have you know, the impressive collection that those guys had. But I felt like I could make somewhat enjoyable content and that it would be a fun way to get back into making videos, which was a hobby of mine for a really long time as a kid and even into high school and college. And I really liked the freedom that YouTube offers its creators. So I was drawn to kind of the egalitarian nature of the platform. It's been a really great way for me to learn more about cameras and filmmaking and video editing and gear in general. It's actually even helped me in my professional and personal life. I wound up switching to a new job last year that does involve some video editing. So it's been a huge boon for me to spend the time with YouTube that I do these days. Matthew Ingmeyer says, congrats on two years. What would you say is the best system from the 90s? My personal favorite is the Super Nintendo. Love that thing. Michael Minot asks, which NES classic game, i.e. Legend of Zelda, Super Mario Bros, Castlevania, Metroid, in your opinion is the most overrated? My vote is the original Zelda, even though A Link to the Past is one of my favorites. When I think of some of the most popular NES games that I have played that did not impress me quite as much as some of those other ones that you mentioned do, I'm gonna go with Ghosts and Goblins. MT Shark 7 asks, what consoles do you mostly collect for? Although I collect currently for, in some ways, 21 different consoles, there are three that I predominantly collect for and that I track actively. Super Nintendo, N64, GameCube. I've committed to the pursuit of a full N64 cartridge only set, and I'm not turning down any GameCube or Super Nintendo titles that I pick up. This one comes from Nintendo13, and he asks, what was the game from your childhood that holds the most nostalgic value? In my somewhat recent top five most nostalgic games, I believe I mentioned Metal Gear Solid as my most nostalgic game, and thinking back on that, I believe that's still true. There's a certain place that my mind goes to kind of revisit the environment and the music and the characters and the story of that entire game. Nick Berry from the UK asks, are there any PAL or Japanese NTSC import exclusives on your collecting radar? At the moment, no, I collect exclusively for NTSC for the most part, I say that with a caveat because I have imported some Japanese items before. I've not yet imported any PAL items, but I'm not averse to doing so. If I see a collector's edition or a game that's only released in the PAL or Japanese markets, then I won't say no to it. I'll definitely track it down if I want it badly enough. Nintendo Hodge asks, what do you collect for and do you have any collecting goals? I predominantly collect for Nintendo, of course, but I also collect PlayStation 1, PlayStation 3. I also have a PS4 and a Wii U, so there's 
some modern gaming in there too, but I do have games on the original Xbox, Sega Genesis. I think as of my 2016 room tour video, I counted 21 systems that I have and that I have games for, but of that I predominantly collect for the Super Nintendo, GameCube, and N64. This one comes from PB Cowboy 87 also of St. Louis. Do you like grand strategy games? And if so, what is your favorite? Similarly to my answers about the NES, grand strategy war games are not an area that I'm very familiar with. I don't think I've played really any in that genre. But it is one that when I read about it and when I see gameplay, it looks fun and it'd be something that I'd be willing to try. I just haven't invested any time into it. Ooh, this is an interesting one. Pocket Rocket Radio says, my question for you is if you had to wear a famous video game character's outfit for a month, which one would you choose to wear? I'd say the game franchise would be Rust, so then I could wear my suit, my birthday suit, all month long. No, I think if I had to wear the same outfit for a whole month, I'd want something that was pretty breathable, but that also could potentially give me some coverage from the elements. So I think I would go with, who am I kidding? I'd be Batman. I would always be Batman, and you would too. Retro Power Up submits his query and he asks, which Pokemon starter are you choosing for Sun and Moon? I'm probably gonna start with Litten. Retro Games Vinyl and Beer asks, what is your favorite item in your video game collection? That's a good question, let me see here. This is another one of those questions where I'm gonna have a two-part answer because I think there's a tie here. The first favorite I'm gonna show here is a favorite because it's something I'm actually really proud of myself for hanging on to. And this is something that I got as a pre-order back when The Wind Waker was released. And it's the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time and Master Quest set. So it's one of those things I'm just really happy that I held on to and kept it in the condition that I did. And the other item is one that you guys have seen in probably some of my other videos. And it's my favorite in the sense that it's the most expensive single game that I have. It's in great shape. I played it for the first time in the winter of 2013. Finished it on New Year's Eve before going to bed and that's my copy of Earthbound on Super Nintendo. COE33 and his sister Leaf over at the Game Hunters ask, who is your favorite companion in Fallout 4? This was kind of a funny surprise to me. I started off thinking that Deacon was my favorite because I loved his sense of humor, I thought he was a really funny synth and I loved the little surprise element that every time you looked away and then looked back at him, he was wearing a different disguise. But then I did the quest where you rescue Kate and I loved her accent. I thought she was a total babe and a total badass. I felt really happy that my character was able to rescue her from the fighting ring that she was a part of. And seeing her character develop and become more understanding and in some ways kind of nicer of a human being because of that too kind of gave me this sense of pride. So I'm gonna go with Kate. Coincidentally, we became lovers after that too. <laughs> the Retro Lectors up in the Great White North asked, all time favorite controller? For me, it's gotta be the GameCube. The DBZ Squirrel asks, what's your favorite game of all time? Everybody says this, but I have to go with Ocarina of Time on N64. These two questions I'm gonna put together because they're kind of similar. Thomas Copernicus Nerdicus Torre asks, what sort of equipment do you use to film and record audio? And my buddy up in Canada, Water Music Retro, also says, you have really nice production quality on your videos. I'm looking to up the audio video standard on my channel. What kind of budget do you think I will need? So my plan is to do a dedicated video here pretty soon, detailing the gear I use. It won't be super in-depth, but it'll give you an idea of what I do with what I have and kind of my workflow, that sort of thing. So once that's out, I'm sure that will be more helpful than what I'll say here. But in a quick nutshell, for filming purposes, I use a Canon 70D and my iPhone 6S. I have a couple of different microphones that I use. One's a shotgun mic that you're hearing right now. It sits atop my Canon 70D. It's the Shure VP83, I think. And I use a USB microphone other times when I'm doing voiceover and stuff like that. And I edit all of my videos with Adobe Premiere Pro. As far as budget goes, I got a really good deal on the camera body, so I did not pay full price for it. Normally the camera body itself, last I checked on Amazon, was right around $1,000 and that's not including a lens. There are some bundles, however, where you can get a Canon 70D with a kit lens for, I think, maybe 11 or 1200, so there's definitely some value to be found there. But if you're going the DSLR route, there are cheaper options available. I just really like the Canon 70D because it has excellent autofocus. It's got a really nice big 20.2 megapixel sensor on it. And learning how to use a digital SLR camera was something I'd wanted to do for a long time. I'll link the shotgun mic 
that I'm currently using right now. If you wanna check that one out, it retails right around $200. For full details on my setup and to give you guys a better idea of what everything costs and how I put it all together, I'll have that video coming as soon as I can. Ow! And the final question in this batch of 26 questions is, what's with the clear tape on your fingers? Now, I don't have any on my fingers right now. I probably could, however, and here's why. X Demigod X and a couple of other commenters noted that in my two years of Cross Shop giveaway announcement video, I had some clear scotch tape on my fingers and they wondered, What's up with that, man? So one of my worst habits in terms of cleanliness and things like that is that I bite my nails. I've gone through periods of time where I've been able to stop for weeks or even a couple months on end, but something happens inevitably and I always revert right back to it. So somewhat recently, and I think largely precipitated by stressors at work, I've been biting the nails on two of my fingers almost exclusively, my left index finger and my left middle finger. And it's because I'm right-handed and I use my mouse all the time on my computer, I suppose, that it leaves my two fingers here to be free. So for some reason, I would just sit there and be at work and just bite them mindlessly and look down and say, oh man, I've bitten this down to the quick. It kind of hurts. I need to stop this. So I didn't have any band-aids at my desk. So I'd rush home right after work and wanted to get started right away on filming. Didn't even think anything about the fact that I had scotch tape on two of my fingers and just started filming anyway. So kudos to you on noticing that, and that's why I had scotch tape on my fingers during that video. Well guys, that wraps up the very first Cross Chop q and I really hope you enjoyed watching this video and seeing some of my responses to some of these really awesome questions. And thank you so much once again to everyone who submitted your questions and entered the contest. I really appreciate it. If you want to see some more videos kind of in this vein, I have a playlist called The Chronicles of Chop. It kind of details different moments in my gaming history, as well as some other nostalgia related videos and fun facts. So I'll link that playlist below and I'll put a card up here or here, one of these two corners. And if this was your very first time watching a Cross Chop video, thanks so much. And if you liked what you saw, please subscribe. Thanks so much for hanging out at Cross Chop today. And as always, play heavy.